It's 9.40 a.m. here in Vienna, and I'm sending a special hello from Austria, straight from the United Nations headquarters. My name is Michael Bichler. I lead your Project Austria and welcome you to another 20-minute session on making a very important building accessible. Here in Vienna, we have a historical parliament building on the well-known Ringstraße, which was designed by the architect Theophil von Hansen and opened 1883. This building here in Austria is currently being re renovated and above all made barrier-free. The opening, by the way, of the Zero Project Conference 2023 will already take place in the converted parliament. I welcome Bernhard Ruschka. He's a well-known accessibility consultant runs an architectural office here in Vienna and also leads the Accessibility Network Austria. Hello, Bernhard. As an external consultant, he is leading the process of making this historical building barrier-free and can give us some very interesting insights here. Bernhard, my first question to you. When and how did this project start? Yes, thank you. Uh, I want to still look behind those huge projects. Uh, 17 years ago, uh, there had been the necessity that uh, for members of parliament with had been a disability, we had to adapt uh, some areas of the parliament. And the former uh, president of the parliament, Barbara Prammer, decided he made a significant decision. She wanted to look uh, to, uh, into the building and wanted me to develop a study about the accessibility, the facilities, and what had to be adapted. Beside that, uh, another assessment had been made uh, on the building conditions. And this building conditions showed, and this assessment showed, that we had to adapt and renovate the whole parliament. So on that reason, uh, uh, architectural um, competition started. And the most important thing had been that the must of the, uh, of the building conditions and the facilities for uh, the historical building and the accessibility had been the base of this architectural project. Bernhard, what were the biggest challenges with this project in particular? Yeah, uh, the biggest challenge is, it's uh, very easy to say, there are so many different areas and different usabilities in that uh, building. So we have, uh, we detected five different areas. For example, uh, the area, the main area uh, for the National Council uh, the uh, plenary hall in the Austrian parliament. Beneath that, we have uh, semi-public uh, rooms for meetings and uh, other yeah, uh, events. Uh, there are also the working places for the delegates, what the members of parliament and the staff in the parliament. And then we have, uh, I, can, I can show here, um, uh, here the first floor, uh, you can see also in color the different areas. Uh, we have the open uh, areas for the public. We have on the top of the roof a restaurant, uh, exhibition space. Um, what else? Uh, very important is that there is an old historical library and in the future it will be open for all the public too. Oh, fantastic. Can you tell me something about the way of working in that project? Yeah, the way of working will be very interesting for all the listeners and watchers uh, here because the process and the conditions and uh, the way of working is the most important thing at such a huge project. So I we are also working in an international standard organization, ISO, in a working group. Uh, there we want to define rules and standards on such a process. 
because the methodology and the strategic uh, principles are the most important challenge at such a big project. Uh, it, uh, uh, the question is at which stage, which decision has been made and uh, which uh, step, working step had to be done. You can see at this diagram, I hope everyone can see, we have the heritage values, very important for, for such uh, historical buildings, but beneath that we have the access strategy and they have, um, they, they have to flew together in uh, the an access plan, for example, and with that you can draft proposals, make solutions, and this should uh, implement into the decision-making process. So this is the most important uh, work to be done here. And if you have uh, the decision made on the right principles and the values of uh, the historical buildings and the heritage, then you have solutions which, can, which show that accessibility at the end is successful and uh, will solve all the problems in such a immovable heritage building. Must be extremely complex because so many stakeholders are involved, I can imagine, or? Um, but yeah. Let yeah. me let me yeah. uh, ask the next next question. How far does how far does accessibility really go in this innovation? And what is being implemented? I'll show another floor. The first floor. Wait a minute. Yeah, the first floor. Um, we have a special access plan. This shows in different colors and different signage uh, the most important accessible issues and topics, for example. You have the green line, yeah, it's all the ways, uh, accessible ways in uh, this floor. You have the yellow lines, this uh, shows the tactile working surface walking surface indicators. For example, the red one, uh, the sanitary rooms, and we have in the whole building 31 accessible sanitary rooms. Uh, you see the, the um, blue uh, color shows those rooms with, a, with an induction loop. Uh, very small details we cannot show, but I have also a picture for you. This is, for example, a draft of the tactile map. In the and the tactile map shows the blind and hard of uh, uh, visual impaired persons only the most important important things for them. So this is one of the drafts. In the future, this will be on a special desk, especially for this uh, group of people. And back to the to the um, way of work. There is an architect uh, working especially for the field of accessibility in the parliament. She's coordinating. And uh, this is very important because we had challenges and questions, uh, for example, in the historical library. We didn't have standards how to, to solve that problem. We had a special, uh, um, the, the architects developed uh, model in 3D, in uh, not in 3D, in yeah, uh, mock-up we, we tell in the real dimensions. And there we had a group of blind and uh, visually impaired persons. We tested that. And we tested the dimensions, the proportions, the, the where, where had been the positions with the tactile uh, signage. Different levels and so on. In the different levels. Mm. And up to that, we developed an, another uh, yeah, solution, for example... Uh, innovation solution, yeah. <laughs> obviously. In the historical cupboard, they have special dimensions. And there is a fixed position with a tactile box, open box for everyone. Everyone can uh, take things out of it in easy to read language, for example or in braille, but they have to find. So the position in each row of the cupboard is the same and very important, if you have long text passages and you have the QR code, 
Here on the top, you can see we also designed and developed, and now we are testing all over Austria, the tactile symbol for QR code. That's very important because we don't have uh, standards how this symbol looks like. We developed especially for that reason and especially for the new Austrian parliament. So you no told me that's really an innovation, absolutely new. There were nothing before. Yeah, and the, the main output here I want to tell you is uh, the way of work. So we need the focus group, we need the uh, persons with disability themselves, but we also need the architects, the knowledge, and for example, me as a coordinator and accessibility consultant uh, to come to the right solution. So what are the biggest learnings? Would you something add on that? Or was this already your final message? <laughs> yeah, I intended that um, there is a lot of knowledge missing. And uh, for example, the knowledge about the functional requirements on accessibility, uh, the way how to work in the design with such issues and topics. Uh, and uh, this, uh, I, I understand because a lot of architects had not the possibility uh, on a technical school to learn that. And uh, the thing is, if you, if you for, for the future and for, yeah, the, uh, how, how to say, um, if, you, if you precisely want to make a historical huge building accessible, you need something, you need the knowledge, you need, for example, an accessi accessibility consultant, uh, you need the right goals we described in the UN CRPD, and I say in my words, you need intelligent design, then you can challenge such a big and huge project. What a great final message. Uh, thank you very, very much, Bernhard, for these insights, for your comments. And we will see all these things in live next February when we have the opening ceremony, then in these new renovated Houses of Parliaments. And I'm looking forward to see you again then. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>